All right, so this is Anwar Solani of Anwar's Reflections. We're here with Dion Clark. Dion, uh, thank you for taking time to sit down with me. I wanted to ask you, um, you know, in light of uh, what I've heard about, you know, your recent heart attack and and, and you deciding to, to not uh, continue your, you know, the work you're doing in the community, how are you, how are you feeling nowadays? Uh, first of all, I want to take thank you for this opportunity and wish you a happy new year, a uh -huh. healthy and safe and a prosperous one. As far as me, you know, I've done this for the last, really all my life. I've been very involved in the community, a concerned citizen. And I just want to take a break. I feel that my health, my well-being is more important at this stage of my life than to keep fighting for the community where I'm not getting anywhere. You know, I make small steps, but I should be making giant moves, and it hasn't happened. Mm. So I'm just going to take a break and take care of me, just go in another direction, you know. And, uh, you know, with uh, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Day being observed on Monday, you're going to be honored with the Community Service Achievement Award by, by Anwar's Reflections and Restoring Freedoms. You know, how does it feel to be recognized for your community service? Well, it's a great honor, especially on, on the day when our first black president, Barack Obama, will be sworn back into office for a second term and all the more with the memory and honor of the, of the late, great Dr. Martin Luther King for humanity, equality, and for the better things of what represent, what life supposedly represents for all of humanity, all of God's children. So it's very touching, very personally satisfying. Mm. Do you think uh, your, your community service, you know, it, it is in harmony with, with many of the values that you said Dr. King represented while he was alive? Absolutely, without a doubt. About community, about people, mm. about doing your part in society might not be as giant or uh, great as what others have done, but you still are contributing something positive to, to mankind, and that's what it's all about, to mm -hmm. be the best that you can be. Mm -hmm. And you've been fighting for a long time for, you know, many quality of life issues, you know. Uh, you know, what, um, what really inspired this this sort of uh, activity. Well, I was I was raised that way. I, my parents instilled those things in me mm -hmm. to take pride in who you are and your surroundings, your home, upkeep, look out for your neighbor. Mm -hmm. You know that that is basically what I'm all about: being a good neighbor. We have to get back to being good neighbors, looking out for one another, caring about one another being there for one another. We've gotten away from that. You know, we don't even know who our neighbors are now. Mm -hmm. And we have to get back to the basic things. And once we get back to being good neighbors, then we can have good neighborhoods. And then we can reclaim the city of Trenton. Because mm -hmm. it's going to take step by step. It's a process. You know, day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. But we can get there if we work at it. And do you, do you I mean, do you have like a, an idea of, you know, where to start? Like say if someone were to want to start, you know, um, getting back to that, that time of being a good neighbor, where, where would one start? Start with self. It begins with you. Mm. When I walk into a room full of people, good morning, everyone. Or when I've seen a woman coming with groceries, open the door for her. Maybe extend my arm out to help her with a bag of groceries. Knock on my neighbor's door who's a senior citizen who lives by themselves and see if they are all right. That's how we can start. The little things. Right. right. And, and they, they build it into big things. And someone is always watching y'all. I believe that when you think nobody's watching you, it's always somebody's watching. And people will be inspired and they'll get involved and it will encourage your fellow man to step up and do their part. I mean, in light of, you know, um, you, you know, 
taking a step back from your community service in light of your condition, your, your health condition, where, in, in looking at the condition of the city of Trenton, where do you see it in five or ten years? Well, as we spoke before, and I see it's going to get worse, sir. Yeah. It's going to get a lot worse before it gets better because the mindset of the people, you know, they talk about get the ghetto, but you make ghettos. It's no such thing as a ghetto. You make a ghetto. And I believe when you talk about the slums, the slum is the mentality and the mindset of man. Once man get his mind out the gutter, then he can clean up the physical surroundings, and he won't no longer live in, in a physical ghetto. His mind will be clean of that mindset of being in the slum. So once he get his mind out of that slum, then he can clean up the physical part because it's a mental part, it's a physical part, and it's a spiritual part. Mm. And God knows all and he sees all. And he's going to watch us and see what we do. He gives us all the tools to do what we have to do, but we have to do it. Right, right. And do you and do you see yourself, you know, working, you know, even even though may not in the same capacity that you did in the past. I know in the past you you were a regular uh, staple at city council meetings, you know, constantly fighting for these issues. Since you're not going to be occupying that role, like, do you see what kind of role do you see yourself playing, you know, now or going forward? Well, I'll still be a be a involved but I won't be involved as much. You know, I just hope people like uh Freedom Green or Daryl Brooks or yourself and well I hope you guys step up to the place and be the leaders of the of our city and of the future because you guys hold it in the palm of your hand. You know, I've only only have went as far as I could go, just like in biblical times with the prophets. Each one of them had a purpose, and then they passed the torch on to the next one. And I believe this is what this is all about. I was in the grassroots, down down in the muck and mire of it. But you guys are the the intellects, the intelligent ones, if you understand what I mean. Okay. Book book wise, mm-hmm. you, of the world, the the progressive of the world with computers and all that. Right. That's why I say. I can pass the torch to guys like you guys, and y'all can take it on to the next level and make it even better and make your contribution and contribute. And I hope that's what you do. Right, right. And I definitely think, like I said, you know, uh, we've talked about this before, that, you know, your, your form of uh, service or activism has definitely influenced me mm-hmm. to, to do the things I do. So, you know, personally, I thank you for your service. Well, and I thank you. But see, that's what it's all about. Like I just said about with the prophets. Moses had a couldn't talk. He stuttered. So he had to pass it on to right. who, who I believe it was, Aaron. He passed it on to another prophet because they was able to articulate and get the message to the people. So we all serve a purpose. And I, I've gone as far as I can with it. But I believe you guys can take it on to the to a, the next level and get more accomplished. So the show must go on. It's just that now, you know, like I said... The we, show will go on. Yes. <laughs> One way or the other. Right. right. And it's just a matter of, like, who will pick up the torch, you know, and, and, and carry things on. Well, hopefully I'm sitting here talking with one of them. Right. I definitely want to be. Yes, and I will be. Yeah, absolutely. I know you will because you already are in your own way. Well, Dion, again, thank you so much for your service and uh, feel better. Well, thank you. Happy New Year once again.